doctors play a great part in our life and sometimes it's so good to listen to that proverb you remember an apple a day keeps the doctor away it's good to have them away but it's also good to know that they're somewhere there to take care of us when we need them sugandhi gopal dr sugandhi gopal is a hold your heart she's a cardiologist and today we're going to chat about the heart hey not the heart with the arrow piercing through it okay i mean if you ask sugandhi she'll say how can you survive if there's an arrow through your heart but that's how we see the heart a beautiful red shape with an arrow and we connected to love and emotions blah 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 but actually the heart is only lub dub dub so today we're going to talk about that kind of a heart welcome to the show dr sugandhi thank you jaya nice to meet you again yes after yes. a long time <laughs> a long time and uh, we met not really as patient and doctor but we met because i wanted to meet a lady cardiologist because i am told that there are not many in bangalore am i right that's true um I, as i know it there are about five of us in bangalore but when i met you you were the only I one i was the only one Agreed? a couple of people working at um jaydeva yes and yes. Uh, one person at uh, narayana hridayalaya so now you're about yes, five of you yes uh, yes compared to how many male doctors oh cardiologists i would say uh, at least 2000 maybe in bangalore <laughs> yeah almost in bangalore yes. you have 2000 male, male cardiologists yes <laughs> and we have five female cardiologists yes <laughs> and i have one of them in the studio oh. <laughs> yeah <laughs> it is something to brag about oh sure okay. <laughs> just tell me a little It's... about uh, you know just going back where you graduated from and that kind of oh i basic graduated details. from velo cmc and almost immediately after that i went to uk okay and um couple of years later i got my mrcp mm. and um and worked in uk for almost uh, 15 years so in between i had hopped out to us for 2 years okay what made you come yes. back to india um mainly my husband he wanted to come back to india and settle down is he a doctor too yeah he's a doctor too he's an ophthalmologist all right yes. and uh, and so he said he pack your bags we we'll go yes and absolutely. you packed your bags and you came yeah it took me 4 years to pack my bags but i finally came are you happy you came and i'm happy i've been here now for almost 10 years oh and um i'm happy i did it oh, and right. it's great to be in india among indians mm-hmm. and um it's really really nice that i could come back and serve for some of our country people wow that's yeah. not terribly patriotic <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's good i'm glad yes. people like you um yeah. think it's good yes. to be living here yes. but you know we'll talk about that part of it later i want to talk about your uh, as a cardiologist sure. what you do sure. and what tips you can give mm. our listeners yes. about the heart because it is such a important function yes is yes. is it the and most it's, important it's uh, well if it ceases to work we don't mm. exist so it is you know, it you know is what about, absolutely what yes. about compared to somebody who's brain dead i don't think we can measure it like that i mean if oh. the heart is dead then the whole person is dead okay you can be brain dead and alive technically all right but of not much to yourself or to the community but you can so donate your organs you can donate things. the organs so you will yes. be used so yeah to that extent but if but your not, heart you know, stops yes. nothing can happen. nothing can happen so it is yes. the most important it is it okay. is <laughs> so let's talk about the basics about it yes you sure. tell me if you're uh, yeah like heart tell me like a... i'm a 6 year old <laughs> okay okay. <laughs> okay so the heart is a pumping organ okay. so it's got um, blood coming in and it pumps the blood out mm. and with some pressure so that it can enter all the arteries and reach the various parts of the of the body okay. so that is from the head to the toe if the heart was not working or not pumping the blood will not be gushing out into the arteries okay. and perfusing all the tissues to keep it alive mm-hmm. okay so um, it's absolutely important that this happens more than 70 times a minute 
Okay. That's what is called. That heart is what rate. is called the heart rate or okay. the pulse rate, mm -hmm. and uh, so this is controlled by a little electrical cell that mm -hmm. puts out electricity so many times every minute, and then it goes through a circuit very similar to a circuit in a building. Mm -hmm. So the electricity is carried from um, the electrical part onto the pumping part, and that's what makes the heart pump. Okay. Okay. And to keep the muscle well nourished, you need an artery to supply these muscles as well. And these are the coronary arteries. And if those arteries get blocked, then a uh, area of the heart dies. And that is what is called a heart attack. Okay. okay. So the blood is not contained in the heart. Blood is contained in the heart for everything else. Yeah, it is contained in the heart but and it's, it's just a small out. little thing, no? Does it oh, so it it keeps coming and going. In. Okay, so it, does, it is not a like conduit. A reservoir. No, no, okay. it's like having a pump mm -hmm. in the middle of a water circuit. You know, without the pump, the water is not going to reach the correct place. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this only does the yes the uh, distribution of yes. the whole thing yes. through the body. Yes, and it has mm -hmm. to. Go through these vents. Yes. And these tubes that come out of the heart mm -hmm. are called arteries. Yeah, okay. And the ones that come back into the heart, because the blood has to be recycled back into the heart, mm -hmm. those are called veins. So the recycling is also done by the heart? Um, it's the, pumped. I it's mean, there are two sides to the heart. Okay. So one side pumps the bad blood into the lungs. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, that's what I want. So to that the lungs get oxygenated mm -hmm. and the other side gets the uh, good Oops. blood coming from the lungs onto the heart All right. and pumps it out into the arteries so that good blood can be supplied to the rest of the body. So the lungs are also a very important part of the sure, sure. heart. Yes. You know, I remember reading all this in school. Yes. We had to draw those things. <laughs> yes. Okay. But at that time, you just learnt it like a theoretical thing, you know? Yes. Okay. It wasn't about my heart. It was about heart. Heart. Yes. Okay. You had to yes. learn. All right. There's a vein. There's an artery. Yes. This is what happens. I think as we grow older, we yeah. sort of learn what all can go wrong with it. Uh -huh. And we hear about people who are not doing well because their heart is not working well. And I think it's more aware, uh, makes us more aware of it and makes us hopefully more positive uh -huh. in terms of looking after it and not just ignoring it. All right. So how does you know? one look after it? Okay. So there are a couple of problems that go wrong with the heart. Okay. One is that if you don't correct risk factors like high blood pressure maybe. Okay. Okay. The heart is going to have to work extra hard mm -hmm. and it's going to eventually fail. Double time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And if you don't look after the arteries that are supplying the muscle of the heart, mm -hmm. then the heart is going to stop working or it will get damaged in various parts of the heart. And again, um, one will be very sick mm -hmm. with feeling breathless and mm -hmm. not able to do any exertion. So these are the two main parts of the heart, the pumping part and the blood supply part. Okay. So we have to look at how to take care of these parts. Now, the blood supply is very critical. There are three main arteries on top of the, on the surface of the heart. Yeah, I can picture it now. Yes, yeah. yes. And these are hardly three millimeters across hmm. and a bit smaller in women, a bit larger in men. Oh. You know, in men it also could be 3.5. Nature has... Uh, yeah, slight differences there. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. But is it good or bad? Um, because they say women have, less women have heart attacks than men have. Oh, that's not true at all. No? No. Okay. No, what no, a pity. No. no. <laughs> no. Um, it's possible that uh, till menopause, we may have a slightly re reduced chance of a heart attack compared to men. Mm -hmm. But after menopause, we have a slightly higher chance. Okay. And uh, if we have something like diabetes or hypertension that can block the arteries, then starting off with a smaller artery, uh -huh. um, we end up with more trouble. Okay. See, because okay. the artery is small to start as it is, with. As it is. And uh -huh. even if you get a slight furring in it, the percentage of blockage will be much more. Okay. You are really okay. frightening me now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes. but I'd like to know more yes. about it. Yes. You said those little things on top. Yes. Okay. Yes. So the function that it play has is that it pumps the blood. 
Uh, you mean the arteries right on top of the heart um, that you have on the, the surface, of, surface the heart, of the heart. These are called the coronary arteries. All right. So they take good blood mm-hmm. and supply it to the muscle of the heart. Mm-hmm. So the muscle cannot work if not enough oxygen is there, okay. and the oxygen is carried by these arteries okay. through the blood cells. Now, see, yeah. all this happens on its own. Yes, it's oh, nature's that's the, marvel. That's the marvel, isn't yes. it? But when it doesn't happen like that, yes. What are the reasons why it doesn't happen? Okay. So one you said was blood pressure. Yes. Okay. So we can look at these uh, see eventually as the body ages. Hmm. There is always a chance of hardening of the arteries mm-hmm. and a blockage of the arteries. Okay. So our uh, attempt is to live as long as possible in the best health possible. I think okay. the best health I can agree. Yeah. As long as possible is well, the let me put it the other way. Yeah. In the best health possible as long as possible. Okay. Okay, first the best health. Best health. Okay. okay. Now, if we want to do that, we have to try to prevent these arteries get from getting choked up. Okay. And we can look at the risk factors mm. in two groups. One is risk factors which we cannot change. All right. Okay. And there are risk factors which we can change. Okay. So the cannot change is predominantly genetic. genetic. Mm. So we are born in a certain family with mm-hmm. a high chance of getting into heart problems. Okay. We probably can't change that risk. Not at all. But we can change what we add on to that risk. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. We so can minimize the minimize the heart. risk by preventing other factors from adding on. See, mm-hmm. if you have two, three factors, it's worse than one factor. Yeah. So the one factor, I've already inherited it. So I can't do can't anything, do anything about, about it. it. Okay. But I can change the other factors. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the other factors are regular exercise. Mm-hmm. We keep on saying regular exercise and mm-hmm. probably most people don't understand why this should be. Okay. See, when we are exercising, the heart needs extra oxygen or extra blood supply. So if we are training the heart every day uh, to have that impulse that it needs extra oxygen mm-hmm. and it sees whether enough blood supply is there or not. Now, supposing a person who is exercising mm-hmm. gets a slight block, okay, the heart will do its best to uh, create further channels, extra channels like a natural bypass right. uh, to maintain the blood the supply. Balance. Okay. But if it is a person who has never exercised, the so heart then- never knew that it's not getting enough blood supply. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay, then there is no chance for it to make the extra channels. So it's really, really important that but we train uh, the heart better and keep exercising on a day-to-day basis. But doctor, as far as I know, 80% of the people don't exercise. Well, that is a problem. and that But they all why seem to be living happily and long life and things like that. So uh, Long life, I'm not sure if no, they're not exercising. Okay, they're all right also, I see. See, when, you, when I go for a walk in the morning in the park, yes. there are about 25 people, that's all there. Okay. On a I Sunday, maybe 40 people. Yeah. The rest of them are sleeping. Sure. And it doesn't seem to be a good idea because we know that a lot of Indians have genetically a higher tendency to have heart disease. Okay. And perhaps that is the reason why we are seeing so many patients with uh, heart attacks. You do? Yes, certainly. Okay. And um, the youngest I have seen is 25. And why would a 25-year-old get? Uh, He was obese and he was just thoroughly spoiled by his family. Everything was brought to him. He never moved. Okay. So... And obesity uh, also obesity. is a, yes. All right. Yes. And when you say and exercise, diabetes, when yeah. you say exercise, yeah. what what kind of exercise do you mean? Okay, um, aerobic exercise is what we are looking at. Okay, and um, that means that uh, stimulating your heart a little bit what and you putting call the cardiovascular. it under cardiovascular. Mm-hmm. And um, so we are not looking at weightlifting no. as a heart health okay. thing. Uh, we are looking at more um, at um, running, swimming, uh, jogging, that mm-hmm. kind of walking exercise. Also? Walking also. Okay. Um, cycling? A brisk walk, cycling, sure. Yeah. And uh, a brisk walk, 20 minutes a day would be the minimum required. Okay. Do it at least five days a week. Mm -hmm. Okay. So two days you can continue to be lazy. It's doable, right? Yeah, doable. Because everything else requires gym equipment. We are not asking every single person to become an athlete. Uh 
We're just saying stimulate your heart a little bit by walking for 20 minutes. That's good enough. I think it's yeah. something anybody can do can in the do. interest yes. of their heart. Yes. Right? Yes. The second thing is uh, hypertension. Yes. Is that also genetic or is it could be for due to work um, stress? And definitely like that? genes carry a big um, role in creating the high blood pressure. Mm. Um, but I think the current environment of stress and living in the fast lane also also does this. Um, and I think everybody needs to take a step back and look at their life and see how they can reduce the stress and how to manage it better. It's not that no one can live without stress mm-hmm. in this day and age. I was age. just going to ask you. Yes, but at least we can analyze it and see what is the stress that is absolutely necessary mm-hmm. and what is the stress that's not needed. Okay. Okay. What they call and new stress. Can, it's called positive yes, stress. Sure, yeah. sure. Rationalize it and see how to take it more positively. Okay. And that should reduce the hypertension. We are also seeing a lot of hypertension among the IT crowd. Uh-huh. Um, hypertension coming on in their 20s while their parents might have got it in the 50s. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are getting in their 20s. So that's also something they need to think about and lead a better lifestyle. Okay. This exercise, half 20 minute walking, yes. will minimize the sure, risk of that? Sure, sure. Okay. And Indians have a high consumption of salt. All right. The um, next thing I was in, going to yes. ask you about diet. And yeah. uh, salt also would reduce the blood pressure if you can um, minimize the salt. And if you remember that the more chili you put in, the more salt is needed. So, so moderating that would also help. See, in Indian families, especially yes. Indian cooking, a lot of pickle is eaten. Yes. And pickles have a lot of salt in them. A lot of it. To put it in perspective, huh. if you're looking at the salt requirement, we're talking about four grams of salt as a basic requirement. Mm. Mm. A lot of Japanese cuisine has only two to two and a half grams and they seem to have less hypertension. Okay. And um, and this four grams, um, you, you probably would get about a gram in each piece of pickle. Each piece? Each piece. Oh. So that is the kind of uh, salt that we are eating. All right. Yeah. So especially some states, they are very prone to eating a lot of pickles, yes. right? Yes. So their chances of uh, having hypertension and so. all this. I would think so. And those yeah. who have hypertension must avoid. Oh, definitely. definitely. If you, you can actually see it on the days they eat a lot of salt uh-huh. for whatever reason. Okay. The blood pressure shoots up at least 10 to 15 millimeters. What about fried food? And they can check food? it themselves. Uh, fried food has a different way. It doesn't actually uh, change your blood pressure. Okay. Um, but obviously it's got a uh, tendency to create cholesterol in the body. Even if you're not eating cholesterol in the oil, mm-hmm. they'll advertise saying there is no cholesterol. Free cholesterol. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, every oil is cholesterol free because cholesterol is only produced in animal tissue. Mm-hmm. It is not actually produced in the plant. So you're not going to eat cholesterol okay. but the fat gets converted to cholesterol in your body so, so the more fat uh-huh. the more cholesterol and the more so cholesterol. it doesn't matter that the oil that you're eating is cholesterol free you're giving matter. real bad news today <laughs> 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 all right then the I'm next thing is about that, what but about butter would have direct cholesterol and egg yolk would have direct cholesterol butter so will have direct cholesterol yes but All these saturated okay? fats. Ghee is okay? Ghee is not okay. It's even more purified butter. <laughs> so what is okay? <laughs> what is okay? Nothing okay in terms of fat. As minimum as possible. Okay. And vary your fat every day. Mm. Um, maybe changing the different kinds of oils would uh, give you more of the essential fatty acids, uh-huh. which are not there in every oil. All right. So you'll have a different fatty acid in each one. Uh-huh. That's often the reason why we talk about olive oil and okay. peanut oil okay, and okay, sunflower okay. oil uh-huh. and some sesame seed oil. What about coconut oil? oil? Is there any um, myth about coconut yeah. oil being bad for the heart? Because in Kerala, they use it for everything. Mm. Um, see, coconut oil is a saturated fat. Hmm. See, whatever fats solidifies at moderate room temperature right, is a saturated fat okay. like butter or like coconut oil. Um, we think that the incidence of um, heart attacks in Kerala also has doubled or tripled. It's multiplied. Really? Okay. Uh, yes. Uh-huh. And I'm not sure whether it is only because of coconut oil. 
Mm-hmm. or whether they had a different kind of food in their diet which has now gone off with the with the present food culture mm-hmm. um it could be a simple thing like uh, tapioca is not being eaten you, as much as, as it what was. it used to be before okay okay um research is going on in this but we don't know enough about it okay okay and the next thing is uh, smoking oh smoking actually multiplies your risk of heart disease Okay smoking has many many chemicals in it there are probably about 100 chemicals mm-hmm. that one is inhaling okay and from the lung it goes into the blood mm-hmm. and it works on the arteries mm-hmm. okay smoking we can demonstrate that it immediately causes a um a vasoconstriction what it means is it tightens up the artery okay. so from being a 3 mm artery it becomes a 2 mm artery and it's visible on an angiogram you know you can smoke and take another angiogram and you can see you can that see the, the artery has uh, shrunk or narrowed and so if you smoke and add on the other risk factors and the risk factors obviously you know the lumen of it comes down and uh, and the blockage is much worse the uh, unfortunate thing is even after giving up smoking it takes 6 months to wash off all the chemicals from the body mm-hmm. so it's not that you can just give it up today and think that your arteries are going to be fine okay and most of the time those smoking damage either to the lung or to the arteries are irreversible mm, and one really needs to think about it before getting on to this habit and i hope in schools they are discussing it Okay. I know I I see around if you just mm. walk out of my office see a cluster of people always standing there no, and absolutely smoking absolutely because you know till so. we have the feeling that it's very macho to smoke and um I also see young teenage girls smoking now Oh, lots I of them, lots and perhaps of them. more than the boys now. Yes. Yeah. There's also a saying that uh, I mean, uh, again a myth. I hope you'll blow it, which says that uh, women tend to be more prone to alcoholism and uh, chain smoking if they start on it yeah. than men because of some particular hormone in their body or something like. Is it true? Um, or is it just to scare the women away? <laughs> <laughs> well, remember that women have smaller arteries. so we oh, need to take more why. care okay um i also think that the capacity for the liver to metabolize the amount of alcohol is less in women okay yeah. so okay. um so the tendency to have a higher alcohol level with mm-hmm. the same amount of alcohol and maybe getting an alcohol buzz and all that is much worse in women because so it's it not metabolized true. that quickly. it is true absolutely okay yeah. so watch out women yes isn't it yes. and even smoking now yes. especially when they are pregnant when the baby is small when mm. when they are feeding the mm. baby mm. it's a total it causes um abnormalities in the fetus of when a mother smokes yes yeah, smokes alcohol okay um, yeah even fizzy drinks right yeah that's been studied though but you know to blow these things away mm. i want to ask you i've got some examples to give you okay mm. i had a grand uncle mm. who lived up to the ripe old age of 89 mm. okay and he would smoke that 555 express yes. dabbe mein aate the na yes i think there were 55 cigarettes in, a, yes. in the box yes. he would smoke two of it a day two he was boxes the, two boxes of it Gosh. he was a police commissioner yes. in the nizam's regime yes. in yes. hyderabad okay yes. tall 6 footer 63 or something like mm. that booming voice he just died of old age that's all he didn't have any other problem yes see that is the thing which is very visible to us that somebody survived and he was smoker mm-hmm. so why should uh, my body go wrong okay. you know that is a question that often um, people ask me and they ask themselves all right you know and they sort of convince themselves that look he survived i'm going to survive mm. but it doesn't work like that because you are not seeing all the people who developed Uh, lung cancer or the heart attacks or um you know all the other complications that's go that goes on day in and day out we are doing amputations because the leg does not have enough blood supply and these are almost 90% of them are smokers really okay yes. But again another example I'd like to give mm. you is my friend who's now uh, she has lung cancer mm. she's never smoked 
Her son oh, that doesn't would be smoke. a different kind of Her lung husband cancer. doesn't smoke. The whole yeah. smoke-free home. And she's got lung cancer. That may not be the typical smoker's cancer. Okay, so there, there are so many various uh, types of cancer. Okay. Um, so it could be um, a different one. And uh, to a large extent, um, cancers which are not due to smoking are treatable. Mm-hmm. Um, it could be a small cell carcinoma or something like that, which okay. is immensely treatable. Oh, that's nice. But the lung cancer, um, which is caused by smoking. That is irreversible. It, uh, yeah, it doesn't have much treatment at all if it has spread. So if it is very localized, just about a centimeter uh, in diameter and localized to one lobe and we remove that lobe, yes, there is a chance of cure. But if it's gone beyond that lobe, mm-hmm. usually there is um, very little chance of uh, having any kind of treatment for it. Mm-hmm. See, we all talk about uh, cancer and heart disease and smoking. But just think of what is in the cigarette. It's got about 0.1 milligram of uh, tar in each cigarette. Okay. And this is just like the road tar, oh, what's oh. on the tarmac. And this tar is getting deposited in the in lung. In your lung. Okay. okay, and you can't just take out the lung and scrub it. Mm-hmm. It's going to stay with you for life, and mm-hmm. it's going to irritate the airways for a lifetime. Mm-hmm. And you'll be more prone to dust allergies, more prone to infections, more prone to pollens. Um, so uh, you know there is no cure for it. So one has to really think a lot before starting taking cigarettes. lighting that yes. cigarette. Yes. So it affects the lung and the heart, which are the, the lifelines of fun, arteries, all which the means arteries, the part yeah. of the heart and arteries down in down the leg and legs. in the brain and everywhere else. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's go to the next thing that can create heart problems. You yeah. f- we ruled out genetic because yes. you can't do anything about yes. it. Obesity. Obesity as well. Yeah. Which you can do something about. You can do something. Exercise. Yes. Diet. Yes. Then hypertension. Hypertension. Reduce your intake of salt. We really need to discuss diabetes. Now I was going to come to that. (laughs) (laughs) The bad news. Yes. (laughs) All right. So it looks like um, somewhere around one in eight of the population, of the adult population. Has diabetes. uh, Has diabetes in some form or the other. Um, So 80% of patients coming in for heart disease Mm. already are bad diabetics, bad in the sense they've had diabetes for maybe 20 years or 15 years. Mm -hmm. The 20% who have come so-called without diabetes, Mm. you know, um, they also may have a slight glucose intolerance. When we actually study it in detail um, and we give them a load of glucose and check it, there's still a high chance that uh, they have a slight abnormality in uh, sugar, which has not been picked up. And these people tend to go on and develop heart disease as well okay so really worth checking it once in a year or once in two years um checking the blood you detailed mean? check for of the blood the, for, for the blood. diabetes okay. and for the cholesterol and those who already have it and they know they have it and they're on medication they should have that? more meticulous control see one of the problems with diabetes is every meal you got to be controlled and all your life. So it is very upsetting for the patient. Mm-hmm. And they finally, they just give up and say, I'm going to eat what I want. Yeah. You know, let's Especially eat. when they get it at a younger age. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. How can you monitor everything? In the younger age, I've recently seen one uh, boy who just came with his father and he was a little obese. And I told him, you better check your sugar. Mm-hmm. Sugar was doing 400. Four- and he had no idea that 400? Don't you go into a coma at 400? <laughs> Not always. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> 400 is... He didn't even know he was diabetic. Hmm. Okay. And uh, it took him maybe a year to even accept that he's diabetic. He was denying it, drinking what he wants, eating what he wants, IT job, you know, Mm -hmm. having pizzas in the night and everything was going on. Okay. So it's very recently that he's finally changed his mind and started control. Okay. Is it uh, which is the hen comes first or she can come first kind of a Mm. thing? Do you get diabetes if you eat all that or don't eat it if you have diabetes? How is it? Uh, it's both. It's both. You can I think if you are going prevent? to stress your pancreas uh-huh. by eating a high carbohydrate load, 
Okay. The chances so the pancreas has to work that much double, harder okay. and it's going to get fatigued. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. So um, that would also lead on to diabetes. Now, but there's also you, genetic here, right? Most of it is genetic. Okay. So yes. that pizza and all doesn't really... It's not the cause for getting diabetes there, where it's genetic. No, it is a it is a cause because added to the genetic, maybe you were destined to get it at the age of fifty, and you but got you it at twenty five. Oh, oh, okay, the wrong food habits. Yes. Okay. So if you're very careful and have a healthy lifestyle, you may have been able to postpone the diabetes for a few years mm-hmm. or many years. <laughs> okay. So now here's a patient who already has diabetes. Mm. Vis-a-vis the heart, what does the patient do? Okay. What um, see, most of the studies have shown that meticulous control of diabetes mm-hmm. um, reduces the chance of heart, heart disease okay. or at least postpones it by 10 years. Okay, and that has been studied with the, um, we've got a population where control was not very tight and a population where control was tight mm-hmm. and we've seen a significant difference. Okay, 40,000 people have been studied. Okay. And there is a significant difference and there is no doubt on that. So one has to make all the effort of controlling the uh, diabetes. Now, control of diabetes does not rest only with your doctor. Mm. It does not mean just uh, taking tablets and eating what you want. (laughs) Um, It has to come with a little bit of medications to support your pancreas, a little bit of medications to sharpen your insulin Mm. and help it out with with a significantly good um, um, healthy diet. Okay. Okay. So the minimum carbohydrates hmm. would actually help with this. less of rice, but don't replace carbohydrates with fat. You got to have minimum carbohydrates and minimum fat. fat. Okay. So you're only left with proteins and fiber. So lots of vegetables, vegetables. lots of dal's, lentils. Um, or fibrous rice like red rice. Mm-hmm. There's actually a study to say that uh, red rice or brown rice uh, is good. prevents diabetes. But when you already have it, it doesn't really prevent it, but it may be controlled. No, it helps you with control. Okay. And uh, if you don't have it, have it as a good habit at home mm-hmm. to have um, unpolished rice. The next thing is heart diseases, you said. Yes. What are they? Blocking of the heart? Uh, that is the main thing that we blocking worry of the about, arteries, blocking of the, of arteries, the arteries, because that How do you know your arteries are blocked? What are the symptoms that you get? Yeah, see, that is often the problem. Uh-huh. Um, see, if you look at your finger, uh-huh. if a pin pokes you, mm-hmm. you know exactly what kind of pin and how deep it's going and everything, mm-hmm. even if your eyes are closed. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. But in the heart, there are nerves which are supplying the heart, the, the foot pipe, and the shoulder and the neck, uh-huh. okay, and it is the same nerve that supplies all three areas. Okay, and it's not a. Can very you repeat that? Which are the same area? Which are the areas? Shoulder, neck, and um, shoulder and uh, foot pipe and the heart. Heart. Okay. Okay, so these nerves are not very sensitive. Mm-hmm. So it just gives you a slight discomfort, mm-hmm. and uh, it tells you, "Look, something is happening," okay. but doesn't tell you what is happening. So very often people mistake acidity for Mm -hmm, heart mm -hmm. or the other way around. Any little twinge of pain in the chest and they come running saying I'm having a heart attack. Or it could be coming where the nerve in the neck is getting pressed Uh and that could cause a similar kind of symptoms. So they may not be able to tell us um, exactly where it is. So what are the warning bells then? um, Really warning bells, I mean. Yeah, I think um, a significant amount of uh, compressive pain in the chest. Continuous? uh, Not very continuous. I think 5-10 minutes even. Yeah, okay. When I say continuous, like often, often or kabi kabi spasmodically? No, it could come intermittently even if it is the heart. Okay. Okay. So it, it won't be continuous. So, and if it particularly happens after food mm, or mm. after food and exercise or mm. exertion. Okay. So, you take a walk after lunch and you find that, look, I was fine in the morning, but uh, after my um, lunch, I'm not able to walk. Okay. So, some symptom like that. Okay. okay. And in women, mm. these are not the symptoms that come on. 
Mm-hmm. They could just be having some sweating or just generally not feeling well. They may not even have chest pain. Okay. They're wired a bit different. So mm-hmm. if you're worried, the simplest thing will be to go to the nearest hospital and have an ECG. ECG. Yes. Is the ECG like foolproof tells you something is wrong? Uh, if it is done during pain and if the pain okay. has been substantial and la- lasted at least for five minutes. So you must get it when you it, are in pain. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. it would be pretty accurate. Okay. Okay. So nowadays, most of the emergency rooms are doing two ECGs Mm -hmm. because we have missed out some of the heart attacks. So uh, you might have an ECG at that time and repeat it an hour later. And if both of them are um, normal, then the chance of having a heart disease is quite low. And you should still go ahead and get a treadmill test done if there has been some pain. So a treadmill test is also a must. It's not a must. It, it needs to be evaluated. And, you know, it's a test where you stress the heart. So it's called a stress check test. It. Like, yes. Huh? Okay. Yes. So it's a test of ECG during a stress on the heart. Mm-hmm. So it's more accurate than just doing a simple ECG. Okay. And the other thing is when you said about pain in the neck and the shoulder. Mm, mm. Some people say on the left side of the hand, it mm, hurts. Does mm. that also, is that a that, symptom? That's what I'm saying. It's, uh, you know, the doctor has to have some input to identify where it's where coming it's, from. Okay. And um, so sometimes we do it by elimination. We first rule out that it's not from the heart. Mm-hmm. And then we look for other causes. So left pain, left shoulder pain. Does not 100% mean that uh, it's a heart attack. But But definitely it means... Rule it out. Yeah. It means take action. I also read somewhere that when you have pain in your jaws... Yes. That also That is much more specific. You know, if you walk and you get pain in the jaws, Mm. there's a 98% chance that it's heart disease. It is? Mm. Okay, because generally when it's paining in the jaw or something, you'll take a brufen and okay, it'll go, maybe my tooth hurts no, or something. No, but uh, that could be. But uh, if you're getting a jaw pain hmm. while walking. Only while walking. Yes. And not otherwise. Not a continuous jaw pain. Okay, that's all Then right. there's a higher chance of having heart disease. Hmm. Next thing is when somebody has a heart attack or something, Mm. what you call. Mm. What is the first thing you have to do? Heart pain can be very, very severe. Mm. Okay. Okay. And um, I think if somebody's clutching their chest, they're sweating and they're not looking good. Okay. um, Don't delay seeking medical attention. Mm -hmm. I think that taking him to the nearest hospital, if it's within five minutes of driving distance or call an ambulance. Okay. But they say there's something called a golden hour or something. What is it? How much time do, does one have for all those things? For treating. Yeah. See, for a permanent damage to happen, usually it takes about half an hour. Okay. Okay. The person who clutches their heart and uh, dies suddenly would have died of a rhythm problem. Mm-hmm. Okay. Not just the block and the damage to the heart. Mm-hmm. But when you're looking at a um, person who survives that uh-huh. and, you know, ends up with damaging the heart, uh-huh. which is what we don't want. Okay. Um, um, uh, we would like them to reach the hospital as early as possible. So when they survive this and you say the damaged heart is damaged, what mm. kind of damage happens? Oh, the muscle gets damaged mm. and it becomes weaker and it no longer pumps as well. But they're so still let's alive. Say they're still alive. And they can still be alive for many years, uh-huh. but they will be very limited in exertion. They may not be able to walk mm-hmm. at all, okay. or even walking to the bathroom might become difficult. You hear today so about... So quality of life is poor quality if we don't yeah. reduce the damage to the heart. What is a stent and pacemaker and all that? Okay. Okay, so when there is a block in the artery huh? that supplies the muscle of the heart... Um, we can open it up um, Mm -hmm. with a wire. Okay. Okay. So a wire is pushed in either from the leg or from the hand. Oh, my God. What all you do? (laughs) And uh, so we let this cross the the narrowing or the block that is there and then open it with a balloon. So this is called that... uh, 
It's called an angioplasty. Angioplasty. Yes. Okay. So if we just remove the balloon and leave the artery, mm. there is a chance of it collapsing again mm. and mm. developing a block. Mm. So we try to put in a metal stent. Mm -hmm. um, it's like a support mm -hmm. for the artery to prevent it collapsing again. Okay. And it's made out of um, very difficult materials like titanium. And it's often coated with... Um, drugs which are used uh, in chemotherapy oh. uh, drugs um, so that it prevents growth of the lining of the artery and uh -huh. prevents further blockage okay and yeah this is okay you go around walking around with the stent yeah. in your heart that they won't okay. even feel it <laughs> What about the bypass surgery? Many stents are also put in. <laughs> Many stents? <laughs> Many stents. So, you know what? Yeah. If you are destined to live, you live. You live. Yes. Isn't it? That is true. <laughs> that is true. Heart disease or no yes. heart disease. Sure. What is a bypass surgery then? Okay. When we can't open it with a stent, mm -hmm. either for technical reasons or financial reasons, because oh, you know, when, there are, when there are two, is it three, expensive? It is expensive. Um, regular stent would cost anywhere between uh, one lakh to two and a half, three lakhs. One stent. One stent. Okay. And uh, so if you have multiple blocks, it doesn't make sense to put in so many stents. Okay. Okay, uh -huh. so the bill may come to 10 lakhs. Now then you'll get a heart attack just seeing the bill. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Out you go. <laughs> yes. So the other way to do it would be to actually put a bypass channel right. so that the um, blood does not have to go through the block. Okay. So it takes another route and reaches the same spot. So the same thing is stent and a bypass is the same yes. result? Yes. In, a, in a bypass, we can bypass all the arteries at the same time. Okay. Okay, with one surgery. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. with the stent, if there are multiple blocks, we have to put in so many stents and the bill goes up. Yeah. Besides the bill, yeah. which is a more... Uh, um, it just depends technically what can be done. Okay. So know. it's not like this is better, that's better. No, it's not. If you, like if you can afford it, then you do this no, kind no, of No, no, it's thing. not like that. Okay. What's an open heart surgery? Anything that opens up the chest is called an open heart Why surgery. do you do that? Why do you open up that the chest? That is uh, uh, to do the, the bypass. To do the bypass. Yeah, so have you have to do the, the chest. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, sure. I thought that was different. When you say bypass, no, you no, don't have to open it. <laughs> no, no. You have to open it and you have to find another conduit. Okay. Another blood vessel that can be put into the correct place. How yeah. long does it take to do all this? To I mean, do a bypass? Huh? Um, I think the operating time will be about two hours. That's it? Yes. Okay. But the in-theater time may be around four hours. Okay, all together. And now it's been very smoothened out. I think mm -hmm. most of the time we admit patients and discharge them in about five days. And they lead a normal life after They that. lead a normal life, yeah. What about a heart transplant? Ah, that's a different ball game. Uh -huh. And uh, first of all, um, you need a donor. You must remember that, look, uh, your own organ is much better than having sure. somebody else's organ. It's always uh, associated with various complications. Correct. So don't think that, oh, it doesn't matter. I'll just go get a heart transplant. It's not that simple. Mm -hmm. Please look after your heart first. Sure. Okay. When yeah. everything fails and you've got to replace the heart, um, then first of all, you need a donor. Mm. Okay. So somebody has to donate the heart. So it must be somebody who's yeah. brain dead. Who's, yeah. Yeah. A heart that has stopped bleeding no, is not useful? A heart that already has disease is not useful. No, somebody who dies with a heart attack, say. Somebody who's young just has a, uh, what do you call that? Myocardial infraction is it yes that's a heart attack okay so the person if dies they've already had a heart attack we oh. cannot use that heart okay okay all right and uh, so so it's no yeah. it's a yeah right right i understand that yeah now. okay so it has to be somebody with a healthy heart but some other organ has failed mm -hmm. and the and the um Best circumstance for the recipient mm. is if somebody's brain dead with a head injury or mm -hmm, something mm -hmm, like that, mm -hmm. then the heart is healthy. Okay. Okay. And that can be donated. It's large hearted one has to be to donate one's heart. But one has no choice because one is brain dead.
you have no choice but the family has to be large hearted to be able to donate the heart so that it takes in somebody else's body dil dhadak dhadak oh my god as long as dil goes dhadak dhadak life is jinga lala have there been any such in india yeah Does it delhi happen? has done a few and yes, successful and bombay also successful um we don't get all the details okay. we only see the paper that's been written i've not seen the beyond that you don't know that. how long they've lived yeah but in uk hmm. i have seen quite a lot mm-hmm. and um often what happens is um, patients are on quite a few medications they are called immunosuppressants mm. just to prevent the heart being rejected okay and they have so much of monitoring that uh, patients take up a house right next to the hospital and live there for about 6 months yeah yeah okay yeah. it is that difficult so it's not uh, it's not um, i i would say it's 10 times more difficult than a renal transplant mm-hmm. in terms of really? rejections and okay. what happens the technical details of putting in the heart is not difficult it's so uh, after the after post stop kind yeah. of thing you has there been any experiment about putting in an like a Animal, animal heart, heart. Yeah. <laughs> no. It, um, genetically it will be very different but we have mechanical hearts yeah oh we can put in a machine can that can do the look. work of the heart uh-huh. and uh, it's backed up by battery okay and uh, and in india they are trying to sell it but the service is not very good uh-huh. and it costs about 3 to 3 and a half crores for the <laughs> Yeah. mechanical <laughs> yeah mechanical heart oh my yeah. god yeah but you know it's not a question of putting in the mechanical heart uh-huh. it's how you maintain it okay i mean it's literally it's, it's like a, a machine, machine. yeah and it needs maintenance it needs battery backup and you know you could have two batteries and run out and you know oh. so you have to all kinds the of battery yes, and... practical problems oh my there. god that yes. means somebody must be really wanting to live very badly <laughs> sure. <laughs> I mean we all sure. like to live yes, but yes. not if it They entails have to be so motivated yeah, to get if it done. entails yes. all this sure. sure sure yeah how do you using this word disease 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 often is it a disease heart disease yes sure yeah, i <laughs> it thought it's a, a disorder do you get a lot of emergencies in heart yes yes it's always an emergency always yes because yes. you can't ignore a uh, heart uh, issue and uh, that's often the problem that you know if you if the heart stops and there isn't brain activity for 3 minutes mm-hmm. or you know not enough blood supply to the brain mm. um let's say about 3 minutes or so there is a major brain damage okay okay so that is why we want the heart restarted and up and they, going within that yeah, few they minutes they do that thing on the chest yes. and and this becomes a problem when there is a traffic jam and no access to doctors and mm-hmm. can't reach the hospital mm-hmm. then very often uh, the patient may not survive and that is why all the systems are coming into place very slowly Uh-huh. I try to think positive. <laughs> okay. In these ambulances yeah. they would have all those things, right? Even if there's a traffic jam and all that, you can give all Not these Not all the ambulances have it, ma'am. Uh-huh. And um um the minimum requirement in a in an ambulance should be at least oxygen huh. and a paramedic. Okay. Yeah. But they're not don't have those things? May or may not be. Oh my god. Yeah. There are many ambulances which don't have it. After listening to all this Dr. Sugandhi, I've come to the conclusion that um mm, you're destined to live or you're destined to die. That is true. Isn't I it? I think I mean you know that you take care of everything when a heart attack happens in hospital, huh. we can't always make make them survive. With the best of the doctors, the most experienced doctors and all mm-hmm. the equipment and everything, it's not always possible to make somebody survive. So yeah. I think uh, as an Indian f- having a little bit of philosophy helps would help because if even yes. if Vaidyaraj is very good if Yamraj is waiting <laughs> there waiting. nothing can be done and <laughs> uh, I mean it sounds uh, silly but don't you think a heart attack is a better way of dying than any other thing that is very very true isn't it very true yes out that's it It's very nice for the for the patient. Patient, yeah. I think it's not very nice for the family because um it's very sudden they can't say the goodbyes and all that. Yeah. Uh-huh. And so many resentments kept 
get um, you know kept in the mind after the person is gone so you know what yeah. dr sugandhi this is where we need to tell everybody you'll never know when that machine will stop <laughs> so just keep saying nice things to each other that is sure. don't have regrets sure. and but i don't think we should keep thinking about the machine every day not uh, really we should just live our life in a nice way nice way uh, nice way don't carry grudges do good to everyone yeah don't and carry grudges yes, exactly. and if you love somebody when i say somebody it could be yeah, son daughter them, brother tell sister them. tell them hey you know yes, what i like you very yes, much or what yes. i say nice the things occasional, uh, yeah, maybe yeah. that's the last word you'll be speaking yes. isn't it definitely your occasional compliments mm mm-hmm. Yeah. to everyone around you <laughs> so keeping that in mind i'm going yes. to compliment you for really giving us some very very good inputs about our heart thanks to take much. care of it thanks for having me and it was nice to meet you after so, so long, long again <laughs> we are sure you got a lot from this show today it's called it's my life and that's why we had doctors to tell you how to take care of your life god's greatest gift is life and let's take care of it prevention is better than cure and knowing these things helps not only oneself but your friends your dear ones you can pass on this knowledge <laughs> <laughs>